ever wondered how dirty your keyboards are, why you shouldn't bite your fingernails, and whether it's safe to eat day-old sushi. Well guys, today we're looking at the microscopic world of our bodies and our environment, thanks to TikTok. Now viewers be warned, some of these scenes are a little graphic, but if you're ready, let's dive in. Oh god, those are some grimy nails. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's mainly going to be a collection of dead skin cells uh, and oil. And he's actually digging out quite a lot there, isn't he? Ugh, I hate seeing this. Oh god, look how much there is. Goodness me. imagine it's quite a lot. Oh no, God. These look like some form of parasitic worms. Damn! Now we tend to class parasitic worm infections like this under the heading of helminth infections. Now these might include things like roundworm or tapeworms and a whole host of other parasitic infections. Now these worms tend to get into the body through ingestion of their eggs. Once these eggs are in the body, they hatch in the intestine, where the worms go on to live, causing symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, and weight loss. The scary thing is that these worms can grow up to several meters in length. So if this doesn't stop you biting your nails, I don't know what will. Stop it, get some help. Oh God, okay, that's a little gross. Thank God they pixelated. Oh, he's actually got quite a lot of laugh up there, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, it doesn't look any nicer under the microscope. Yeah, that's quite a lot of detail there, isn't it? You can already see there's lots of little hairs in there as well. Oh, God, look at that. Yeah. So I guess the first thing to ask is what are boogers and why do we even produce them? Well, boogers actually start off as mucus in the nose and it's made up of mainly water, proteins, salt and a few other chemicals. And its slimy, sticky consistency is what helps to trap things like dust, viruses and other germs. And recently scientists theorised that there might be some evolutionary advantage to your immune system with picking and eating your boogers after they observed monkeys doing the same. So maybe digging for gold nuggets in your nose isn't just a gross habit. Oh, is that stinging nettles? Yeah, oh wow. Wow. Wow, look at that magnification. Goodness me, look at the detail, that is crazy. Ah, aha, they move a bit like a pipette. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they look like little columns of chemicals now. Gosh, look at that. Wow. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. And in the end there, he's left with a classic nettle-like rash. Now, if this is a stinging nettle, then this rash is caused by a release of chemicals like acetylcholine, histamine, and formic acid. And one way to help with the soreness of the rash is to rub a dock leaf over the area. It's thought that the evaporating dock leaf juices have a soothing effect over the burning skin. Otherwise, if you can't find a dock leaf, just use a simple antihistamine tablet. It always works for me. <laughs> yeah. I think we've all been there, snacks whilst watching YouTube videos or movies, right? Oh God, yeah, slime and grime all over his fingers. Oh no, <laughs> he then licks the fingers. God, oh no, what's under the key? Oh no, it looks like we've got lots of hair. Oh, there's insects as well. Goodness me. Oh, what is that? Oh, it looks like a little bug. <laughs> yeah, got a little salt bay. He's gonna eat the keyboard. So again, this is another one about personal hygiene. I remember during COVID, we had to wipe down all of the telephones, keyboards and surfaces just to make sure we weren't spreading the virus. I didn't realize how dirty keyboards could be. Okay. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, our fingerprints are so unique. Ah, oh, he's got money there, all right. I think I know where he's going with this. You know, money is absolutely filthy. Imagine the amount of hands that it exchanges through. You must have whole ecosystems just living on it. Oh God, yeah, look at that. Goodness me, plenty of bacteria. 
I mean, if this doesn't convert you to use contactless payment, I don't know what will. Okay, what is this? It's a... Ah, oh, nice! It's a tattoo gun. All right. Oh, wow! Wow. Okay, I never knew that's how it worked. I mean, it looks like there's several needles stabbing you in the skin. I guess that's why it's so painful. Now, I guess my main concern here would be how clean do they keep their equipment and how often do they change those needles? As it looks like a quick and easy way to help spread bloodborne diseases like hepatitis or HIV. In fact, that is a question that we ask of patients who've contracted hepatitis. We ask if they've had tattoos abroad where the hygiene measures around these things might not be as strict. If you're gonna get a tattoo, make sure you ask about these things. Otherwise, you'll be coming away with more than you bargained for. Okay, what's he doing there? Oh, wow! Wow! Wow, I guess, I guess these are your sweat glands. I didn't realise how closely packed they were and how much water actually came out of them. Now, you've actually got sweat glands like this around the whole body, except in a few specific areas, such as your lips, your external ear, your nail beds, and parts of your genitals. And seeing them under the microscope like this, so densely packed, I can better appreciate why I sweat so much when exercising. Oh god, no. <laughs> A toilet. This one is gonna be bad. That actually looks pretty clean. Oh god, he's got a lot out of there. Okay, and he's good, washing his hands afterwards. Yeah. Oh god, that looks that that does look bad. Oh god, yeah. As expected, you know, we see plenty of bacteria here, and it's probably as a result of the f specks of feces or urine that he's found on the seat. And then he's put some hand soap. Okay. And the hand soap seems to be killing everything there. Wow. Wow. That is effective, isn't it? Yeah, so what we're seeing here under the microscope with these rod-like structures appear to be E. coli, which is the commonest bacteria found in your feces. The other thing to know about this bacteria is that it's one of the commonest that causes a UTI. But look just how effective the hand soap is in destroying it. And this is due to the chemical triclosan, which is the active ingredient in most antibacterial soaps. So guys, please wash your hands. Okay, so he's got some uh, some sushi there. Uh, okay, that that looks a little bit old. It doesn't look very fresh. It looks like it's, uh, that salmon's seen better days. Okay, so we're seeing the oils and the cells of the fish there. Oh no, God, the parasitic worms again. Oh God. Watch your profanity. Yeah, I mean that's that that. That's enough to put you off a of sushi, isn't it? Oh, oh god, there's even more of them. Oh. Now, the best way to avoid getting contaminated sushi like this is try to get the salmon as fresh as possible. Try to avoid those things that are reduced or going out of date. And if all else fails, then just cook your fish. But some of you might be wondering, how would you know whether you've contracted these worms while well, you actually see them in your poo? Otherwise, you tend to get a lot of non-specific symptoms like tummy pain, diarrhea, and some weight loss. So if you develop any of those symptoms, it might be sensible for you to keep an eye on your poos. Okay. Oh, nice, okay. So what we're seeing here are structures called papillae and they help us to differentiate between the flavours of salt, sweet, sour, and bitter. Okay, he's taken a swab off of the tongue. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a mixture of uh, normal oral bacteria, um, some of which are actually protective. They help to protect against uh, plaque buildup and uh, decay. But then you've also got some that can actually promote cavities as well. And so cleaning your teeth and having good general dental hygiene will help keep the balance between the good and the bad bacteria in check. And brush your teeth! Okay, so it looks like he's itching his skin here and he's either got something like eczema or scabies. And it looks like it's scabies, which is a skin mite, which can cause an intense itch on the skin, particularly in the hands and in the webs between the fingers. 
Ain't nobody got time for that. Now the mites typically leave a line in the skin where they bury their eggs and you see a dot at the end from where they've burrowed in and out. And people often report the itch starting on the hands before spreading across the whole body. And the problem with mites like these are that they're easily transmissible from skin to skin contact. Now to eradicate them, you not only need to treat your skin, but you need to treat your clothes and everything that you've come into contact with, which can be quite challenging. Okay. Oh God, that looks gone off, doesn't it? Yeah, moldy bread, <laughs> a gas mask and glasses. Maybe that's a bit excessive, we'll see. I mean, you can actually inhale the spores of fungus, um, which can get into the lungs and cause an infection. Oh God, look at that. Look at those spores. Horrible. Look at that fungus. Gosh. Now, some of you who eat blue cheese may be asking yourself, what are the differences between these different kinds of moulds? Well, blue cheese is actually made using a mould called penicillium, which doesn't create any myotoxins and makes it safe for consumption. Whereas the one growing on the bread is a completely different type of mould altogether. Not safe for consumption. Okay, a belly button next. And you just know this one's going to be dirty. Okay, so actually in your belly button you've got a lot of dead skin cells and oils. And you've also got the skin's natural uh, bacterial flora, which is supposed to be there. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Now it's not uncommon for a combination of these dead skin cells and sebum to collect together and form a navel stone, which can sometimes look like a blackhead. It appears black because all these cells get oxidized when they're exposed to the environment. Now, these aren't necessarily anything to worry about and can just be popped out by your local doctor. Hmm, okay, he's doing a little bit of gardening. Okay, so carrots. Okay, <laughs> eating the carrots straight out of the ground. This is probably gonna be one of those controversial ones as to whether you should clean it first. Okay, so it looks like he's scraping off some of the dirt there. And what's he gonna find? Probably some parasites or parasitic worms, isn't it? Oh God, look at that, some parasitic worms. Oh goodness. Yeah, that looks horrible, doesn't it? It looks like an alien. Um, and then some baby snails as well, goodness me. Now, if you ingested those, it's likely to give you an upset tummy. My recommendation would be either to scrub your carrots clean or just peel them down. But let me know your thoughts down below. Okay, is that cream cheese? Um, Ah, oh, okay, he's getting the dog to lick it. So I've heard about dog breath, but dog saliva. Let's see what he finds. Yeah, so I mean, we're seeing plenty of bacteria uh, found in the dog's mouth. Um, oh God, there's some little rod ones there as well and what look like possible worms. Now the danger of dog saliva and these bacteria is if you get bitten by a dog. We routinely prescribe patients broad spectrum antibiotics to help prevent really nasty skin infections that can occur as a result of the bacteria found in a dog's mouth. So if you get bitten by a dog, please keep this in mind. Okay, so it looks like we're looking at the mouth again. Okay, some saliva there. I expect that we're gonna see that uh, bacteria that we saw earlier. Yeah. Remember there's a fine balance between good and bad bacteria in the mouth and he's using some mouthwash. So I'm guessing we're gonna see the effectiveness of mouthwash at clearing out bad bacteria. I probably need to do a bit more of that myself. Okay, this will be interesting. Let's see how effective the mouthwash has been. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, it's really cleared out a lot of that bacteria, hasn't it? Now it's the chlorhexidine within the mouthwash which gives it its antibacterial properties. And we often advise patients who suffer from thrush to use this because it's quite good at eliminating fungus too. And this is particularly relevant in those people who suffer from asthma who have steroid inhalers. Often with excessive use and without rinsing the throat, you can leave yourself prone to fungal infections like this. Hmm, okay, he's got a can of food here. All right, it looks like quite an old can. And a scalpel, probably not my choice of cutlery. But let's see, what's he gonna find under the microscope? Okay, so we're seeing again the cells of the tuna, I guess, and there's clearly something moving in there. 
some some sort of bacteria maybe. Okay, I wonder whether we're seeing the bacteria Clostridium botulium, which is the bacteria responsible for the botulium toxin. And this is commonly found in canned food, which hasn't been preserved correctly. Now, the toxin works by causing paralysis and can cause death within six to 12 hours. And yes, it is the same toxin that we use in Botox injections. So if you're a student and you're struggling with what to eat, maybe think twice before you reach for that old can of sardines or spam. Hmm, okay, what's he got there? Okay, he's got some rice, I'm guessing unwashed. And let's have a look. Oh God, okay. And as expected, it's got some sort of bug or bacteria growing on it. Oh God, look at that. Oh, horrible. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is why you should wash your rice. Now on the topic of rice, please be careful with reheating rice that's been left out for a while, as rice can contain a bacterial spore called Bacillus cirrus, a common bug that causes food poisoning. If the rice is left standing at room temperature, the spores can grow into bacteria, and these bacteria will multiply and produce toxins that cause stomach pain and vomiting. So if you're gonna eat that day old rice, please make sure to cook it very thoroughly. Okay, so it looks like we've got some Frankfurt sausages here, or any variety of ultra-processed meats. Oh God, we see some hairs. Is that an insect? Oh God, and then also some worms or bugs as well. It looks like he's gonna have a closer look there as well. Oh yeah, parasitic worms, again. Goodness me, ultra-processed foods. Guys, if you take anything away from today, whether it's out of date or ultra processed, please be careful with parasitic worms. And the real concern with these is that they reproduce by laying eggs, which can take up to two weeks to hatch. And if they hatch around their anus, they can re-enter the body through the intestine where they might live for several years. The problem is that they're not always easy to prevent, but the things you can do to reduce the chances of getting them are good hand hygiene and processing of your foods in the kitchen. All right, so next he's looking under the cupboard. Oh God, I'm sure we've all got places like that. Mine's uh, I think probably under the sofa, could do with a bit of clean. Oh no, not inside the vacuum. I'm sure you're gonna find all sorts of things, hair, nails, um, bugs. What have we got here? Oh God, yeah. So it looks like carpet bugs and some other kind of insect. Yeah, that looks like a carpet bug or like a dust mite. Now, although they're not poisonous, they can affect some people's respiratory system, for example, people with asthma. But they can also be quite tricky to eliminate with everything in the house needing to be washed at really high temperatures. That includes the carpets as well. They're almost so difficult to get rid of that you might not even bother. Ah, okay, bananas, my favorite fruit. Oh, I don't know if I wanna see this. What have we got? Oh God, so yeah, they look like larvae of some type or like maggots. Um, oh goodness, those are horrible. I wonder if they're larvae of things like uh, fruit flies. Oh goodness, yeah burrowing their way in and out of the banana. Now, fruit flies tend to feast on rotting or decaying foods, which mean that its maggots can be contaminated with salmonella or E. coli, which we spoke about earlier as being bacteria that can cause upset stomachs, diarrhea, and vomiting symptoms. So the best thing to do if you see these fruit flies hovering around your bananas is probably just to chuck them away and spare yourself the risk. Okay, so, it looks like we're looking at uh, the water going into a local river. And I mean, you're gonna expect a certain level of bacteria in this water anyway, um, which is very similar to the bacteria that you'd find in the river. All right, yeah, so we're seeing here a mixture of different organisms, which you would likely see in river water. But I don't think I'd be drinking this. Now the dangers with excessive amounts of sewage getting into our local streams and rivers is that it can kill wildlife. It does this by disrupting the natural ecosystem within the water, causing an overgrowth of algae. Now when algae are multiplying rapidly, they effectively deplete the water of oxygen, which effectively suffocate fish and can destroy complete ecosystems. So it's really important that we monitor the amount of sewage that's getting into our water systems. 
Okay guys, that's brought us to the end of today's video. If you have any further questions or any recommendations about any future videos, please let me know down in the comments. And if you're free just now, why not check out one of these two videos? Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.